my name is Joel Rasmussen, and I'm one of the theology tutors at Mansfield College, and this is my colleague. I'm Jen Strawbridge. I'm one of the other theology tutors at Mansfield, and um, I teach uh, mostly New Testament and early church history. And then Joel, do you want to say what you teach as well? I should have said that. Um, I work in <coughs> modern historical and philosophical theology, so primarily Enlightenment, post-Enlightenment, and modern engagements between philosophy and theology. Yeah. So you, we, span, we span from the early church um, history to um, um, modern considerations of the place of religion and religions in the modern world. What is the course? I guess you could say theology is kind of the basis of the university. Um, it's at the heart of the foundation of Oxford over eight centuries ago. Um, it's, it's an intellectual discipline, as, as all the disciplines are, particularly in the humanities, that has a really, um, it's got a social history, it's got historical significance, and it is still really applicable today. In fact, theology and questions about theology are behind most of the conflicts and conversations in our in our world, intricately tied in, in fact, to even many of the debates going on at this moment. Um, and if you study theology, if you, you actually become an historian, you can become a philosopher, you're a textual literary critic, you're a linguist. It's a range of disciplines that you encounter on our course that means that you're incredibly well equipped on the other side of it to basically engage just about anything that you want to. Yeah. I don't know if you want to say a bit, Joel, about just what the course even kind of looks like, what some of the opportunities are people have. Yeah, um, well, I agree with everything you've said, and I would, I would echo that, but also maybe expand it. Historically, it's a discipline, but maybe now it's sort of several subject areas under one umbrella, faculty, the faculty of theology, and religion in that respect may be one of the broadest sort of humanities areas in which one could work. Um, because you're right, you can do biblical studies, you can study the formation of the doctrines, philosophical engagements, anthropology, sociology, and the study of you know, five different religious traditions, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, uh, Hinduism, and, and Buddhism. And then the languages and texts of all those traditions um, throughout, so so it, it's enormously broad, but with also the capacity to focus when you have found what what your real interest, your specific interests are. Exactly, it's one of the fun things about the course too. We offer Marley has joined us. We have lots of dogs in the course historically, don't we? <laughs> we do. Yeah. So one of the things about the course, there Mansfield offers two different. Um, ways into the course. We have a single school in theology and religion where you become um, conversant, in fact, and competent in one of six languages. Um, and you get to read sacred texts in original language, which is very exciting. For philosophy and theology, which allows you to work jointly between two faculties. Um, and you can split the course in many different ways depending on your interests. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility within this course to engage widely in questions you might have about um, about these topics. Mm -hmm. I want to talk a bit Joel, about how the course is is taught. Yeah, um, I think the hallmark of uh, learning and teaching in Oxford is the tutorial method. So, and and you and I are both tutors. Um, at Mansfield College, but Mansfield actually has several other tutors working in, in the theology and religion faculty. Um, and it's a, because of that, we can actually offer most, if not every possible um, paper option or course option um, within, within Mansfield College. Um, and in the, in the tutorial, we sit one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one with, with, with students and we work through um, how you've read the texts for the for the week's assignment, the essay that you've prepared, um, which can sound a bit intimidating, but um, you you actually come into the swing of it rather quickly when you arrive in Oxford, and people really enjoy having the opportunity. Students really enjoy having the opportunity 
to sit with someone who has spent the time to read the essay and comment on it and have a conversation about that material for a full hour each week. Um, additional to tutorials, um, you can attend lectures with, uh, with uh, Professor Jen Strawbridge, for example, um, where you would go out of college, you would go to the faculty building and attend the lectures or attend seminars where people are presenting on their research. Um, or classes, which are a mode of teaching somewhere between lectures, uh, where you might have as many as 50 people aud auditing the, the lecturer, and, and tutorials where it's very small. Classes would typically have about six to nine people working through a common subject or topic for the week. Um, yeah, and of course, Jen, we also have the thesis, right? Do you want to say something about that, the thesis at the end? Sure. Within the, and one thing about the um, single school course in theology and religion is you take a broad range of required courses in your first year. And then after that, you essentially have a choice of focusing however it is that you want to focus. So you have a free range, a full range of courses that you can choose from. Um, and you design essentially your own curriculum from that point. The only required paper after your first year is a thesis. The wonderful thing about the thesis, though, is that it's drawn out of a question that has either you've brought with you or one that comes out from a tutorial conversation. And you, um, you basically get to design your own topic and then write a research paper on that to answer the question in conversation with a supervisor of your choosing. So someone who you've enjoyed working with in a new tutorial or who's an expert in that area you get to work then one-on-one -on -one with to develop this idea. So if there's even a, you know, something you've wanted to study that isn't in the curriculum, you can still study it through your thesis. So it's a really kind of cool um, way that you get that it kind of comes as the culmination of the course. Why Mansfield um, for theology and religion? It's a great place to come to study theology and religion because we have one of the largest undergraduate intakes in theology and religion and a sizable um, postgraduate community in theology and religion as well. In fact, amongst the undergraduates, we are one of the larger um, colleges to take in theology and religion. Um, having said that, as a college, we are a small and very personable, welcoming college with a deep history and indeed a, the, the college is founded in the study of theology and religion. Um, and additional to that, we have a group of tutors who would welcome you and be very interested in you as people and as scholars. Yeah, absolutely. We're obviously biased about <clears throat> why Mansfield, because we love our jobs and we love our college. Um, and we also love our community and think Mansfield is a wonderful place to become part of a small community who you know, because we are smaller, you get to have wonderful conversations unpacking a tutorial question. So even by the time you get to the tutorial, you've already had dinner talking about it, sitting over coffee and in our crypt, um, which is our cafe, discussing it. The conversations about theology and religion and the things that you really care about in this subject and more widely are not limited to just what's happening in a tutorial or in a lecture, but actually become part and parcel of the whole of your life within the college, thanks to the real spirit of community um, and openness, I think, that you'll find at Mansfield. What are we looking for in interviews? I think one of the things with interviews is this assumption that you have to come having every right answer. Um, and the thing is, we're not looking for right answers. In fact, to many of the questions we ask, as for most questions in this subject area, um, there isn't a right answer. Um, and of course, if you had all the right answers, you wouldn't have to come to Oxford to work and learn alongside of us anyway. So um, I think we're, we're, what we're really interested in is seeing how you think, um, seeing that you, what your passion is, what is it that drives you to want to study theology and religion for three years and hopefully even more? Well, again, I would echo everything you've said. Um, I might also speak a little bit about those who are applying for the philosophy and theology course. We want to gauge your, your genuine interest in both 
sides of the course, as it were, um, and interest not not just in in enthusiasm and saying, "Boy, that's really interesting," but we want to discover um, what have you been reading, what are, what are the questions you bring to the topics, um, what drives your what drives your own engagement with these questions. Um, and of course, then part of the interview always in, entails um, a reading of a text exercise where um, we will set before um, candidates a text they're not familiar with or which we anticipate they're not familiar with um, and see how they approach their reading. What, what um, interpretive moves do they make in, 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 in encountering the text and it's important to bear in mind that here we're not trying to trip anyone up. We really want to have a genuine conversation about um, the interpretive decisions one makes in, in reading texts and we want to sort of um, value that process and help each person help themselves and that's what we bring to our teaching as well. We're not trying to catch anyone out, we're trying to help each student um, become the best student they can become. Think about our course as a whole. A wonderful thing about such a varied course that allows you so many options and opportunities, places to plug in, things to fall in love with, is that it opens up incredible number of opportunities, not just within the course, but after you finish the course. Mm -hmm. um, so some of our graduates go on for further study. They stay on at Oxford or they go other places for master's degrees or PhDs or PGCEs. Many then be, you know, become teachers. Some go on for graduate study in other subjects like environmental studies, law, education. Um, some of our graduates, of course, go into work within the church, but some go on for law conversion. They work in think tanks. Um, the fact that you've been able to think critically and write concisively about really tough topics and big issues means that many public relations firms um, look for humanities graduates and theology graduates in particular because you're able to engage in some of the issues in the world today. So there are things I'm forgetting, Joel. What else would you add? Um, some of the more interesting and maybe unexpected ones it would be one person went on to be a transportation um, engineer at Heathrow and someone became a professional rugby player. Um, so these are not what one anticipates, but really you're right. The, the, what one does after the options are endless. If you are looking for further things to read, um, it depends because a lot of times you ha already have a kind of passion, something that's made you think about this course already. Um, in New Testament and, and kind of the areas I work in, there's some great actually historical novels that are fascinating to kind of get into the subject from a different perspective. So things like a recent book by Paula Gooder called Phoebe. Um, there's also some wonderful podcasts you can listen to. Some of the podcasts, like one by a Duke professor named Mark Goodacre called Podacre, um, which are some lovely little podcasts um, about the New Testament, some of the questions that are, arise from it. There's another great podcast called On Script, which is a conversation about modern ways that um, particularly New Testament texts, but early early historical texts as well, apply to what we think about um, theology today. How about you, Joel? Um, if, if one searches for podcasts and search um, in our time, Melvin Bragg has a backlist of religion and theology conversations there. And then I don't actually know a lot of podcasts, but the one I do listen to when I am working in the garden or something is called The History of Philosophy Without Any Gaps. Um, and that's hosted by Peter Adamson, and that's that's very very good. And then in terms of readings, um, I would just throw out a list of of names rather than titles. Anything by Kierkegaard, in, in anything by Dostoevsky, Ralph Waldo Emerson, Nietzsche, philosophical works by William James, novels by his brother Henry James, and then the fiction of Flannery O'Connor and Marilyn Robinson. Those would be some of my faves. Well, we just want to thank you for sticking with us for um, 
this little kind of taster of what theology and religion and theology and philosophy is like at Mansfield. We hope that you have a bit of a better sense about what it'd be like to join our community. Um, we really hope that you will consider joining the community at Mansfield. And if we're sorry that we can't meet you in person, um, I'd hope that if you have questions about anything we've talked about or anything else, you'll send us an email. We'd love to be in touch and hope that um, we might have the chance to, to uh, see your application um, come later on this year.